Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Hello and welcome to Close to Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. And you shall name him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. What does that look like? What does it look like today to say God is with us? We're a week out. You've got six more shopping days. God is with us. I don't know that he was in the mall. <clears throat> he certainly wasn't there on Black Friday when people were being trampled. God is with us. Probably not at the office Christmas party either. God is with us, not in the snowman on your roof or the happy holidays or season's greetings that we blurt out. What does it mean to live in a world that says God is with us? And better yet, you know, we're a week out from Christmas. And most people say, you know, the holidays are just crazy. They're so hectic. They're so this, they're so that, they're so the other thing. And I don't have time to really get ready for Christmas. What does that statement usually mean for people? It means I haven't bought all my presents. Nothing is wrapped. The in-laws and the outlaws and everybody else is coming over for Christmas. I haven't got my menu down, Pat. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm not even through decorating, and we're going to be taking them down in another week. I'm just not ready. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're not ready for the day. It matters whether or not you're prepared for a salvation event. He shall bear a son and you shall name him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. What would God look like in your house? I'm serious. I'm not talking about where you're going to put his crib. I'm talking about if God comes to your house, what's going to be different in your house? Are we going to erase some things off our computer? Are we going to get some videos out of that shoebox that we hide in the closet that the kids always seem to find? Are we going to start to speak to one another differently? Is God's presence even going to be mentioned during Christmas, are we going to treat people as if there's a God in my house? Jesus is with us. And I'm going to treat the people in my family the way God would have me treat them. I'm going to see the angry teenager who just thinks I'm crazy and, <coughs> and out of touch and live on a different planet. I'm going to see in that child a lot of hurt, a lot of anger, a lot of questions. 
I'm going to realize that they're searching. I'm going to help them through that. I'm not going to react just to the outside. I'm going to see this kid is really hurting, really confused, really afraid, and really trying to live between two worlds. <coughs> the world that we talk about here at home of being faithful to God and this world of social media, this world of political correctness, this world of all the different things that everybody says they have to believe. And if they don't believe it, they're anti, they're hateful, they're phobic, they're whatever. Are we going to bring God into our celebration of Christmas? And how does that affect our house? How does that affect where I work? God is with us. Yeah, I know boys will be boys, but this stuff has no place. You guys are too old for that stuff, okay? You're old, you're married, you have children, you have grandchildren. You're still doing that? You're still showing that stuff at work? Grow up. If God is with us, are we going to treat people as people, as made in the image and likeness of the same God that we're made in the image and likeness? You know, a lot of people have a lot of stuff in life. A lot of stuff in life. Yeah, they come in with an attitude. Yeah, they, they come in going through a tough time. How many times do we ever worry about what's going on with that person? I could give a rat you know what about what's going on with that person. My only concern is, is that they're productive. And if they're not productive, <coughs> who needs them? I certainly don't. And that understanding of what we're about in bringing Christ into the world is essential to our celebration of Christmas. And when I say it's essential to our celebration of Christmas, what I'm talking about is we can have holidays and parties anytime. We can do it for the 4th of July, we can do it Labor Day, we can do it Veterans Day, whenever you want, we can throw a party. But if you're going to celebrate what we're talking about, Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us, <coughs> we've got to figure out not only how to bring God into our celebration, we've got to realize what we're asking for God. Think about it, you've got a week. You've got a week to prepare for the birth of a Savior. What do you need in your life? Oh, well, I need my wife to come back, my husband to come back. I need my kids to get off drugs. I need to get a better job. Hey, baby, I'm talking about God, not Santa Claus. I'm asking you, what is it that God needs to change in you in order that your circumstances, your situation, and your life can find peace? Certainly, life would be easier if my marriage was happy. Certainly, life would be easier if my children weren't addicted. Certainly, life would be easier if I could make a living for my family the way I want to. I understand that. But what do I need to deal with whatever life is going to throw at me? And I have no idea. How many times do we plug one hole and realize we got two more holes over here. And that's pretty much of our life story. Gee, I thought, you know, if I make it through this, through this uh, uh, chemotherapy and this radiation, if I can get through this, everything's gonna be fine. And it is with your cancer. And then you realize one of your children's marriage is in trouble. And it is, and finally they get them back together. And then you realize one of your grandchildren's on drugs. All that stuff happens. It's a world in which we live. It's a reality of life. It is the stain of original sin that seems to be embraced more and more these days. And so what is it, Lord, that I need to go through life knowing that God is not with us. God is with me. And whatever God has brought me to, God is going to bring me through. Whatever cross God asked me to carry, God's going to give me the wisdom, the strength, the know-how, you name it, God is going to give me what I need. And I want you to really think about that. We're preparing for Christmas, the salvation event. What does it mean to say that the Savior 
has come to me. You know, maybe the Savior is not that I stop drinking. Maybe the Savior is that I learn to love myself. I learn to forgive myself. I learn to accept my own faults and failings. I learn how to ask forgiveness. I, le I learn how to give forgiveness. I learn how to give mercy. Maybe that's what salvation is. You can go to AA for drinking, but that's not going to change me unless the Savior, that higher power, that God becomes part of my life. And what is it going to mean in our own lives? You know, for, for a lot of you out there, Christmas is a time where you're visiting home and your parents still want you to go to church with them. And you think you're going to do the brave thing and go to church. Fine. Nice thing. Mom and dad are happy. And we even got a picture after we went to church together. Isn't that sweet? Merry Christmas to you too. That's not a salvation event in your life. That's a common courtesy. That's the only thing you're doing it for is so that they might feel better. What about the other times in the year when I don't feel the presence of God? What about the other times of the year when I feel I'm out there by myself? I'm alone. And this isn't working. I'm not getting there. I'm not getting ahead. I'm not succeeding in what I think is most important. Yeah, I know I thought the money was most important, but guess what? I got all the money I need. I don't have any of the happiness I want. I've got all the possessions I need. I don't have any of the peace that I really desire. Then where am I going to find that? Do I have to buy a bigger house, more toys? Do I have to double my income? Or do I have to find what it means to know that God is with us? And God is with us is the event that we prepare for at Christmas. And if the only thing we're doing is preparing for a holiday, if the only thing we're doing is shop, uh, shopping and wrapping and cooking, and, and getting a meal ready, you're not preparing for a salvation event. You're preparing for a big party, and that's nice. And you know, if we, we get through Christmas and say, God, I'm so glad the holidays are over. I am so tired, I'm so worn out. I've been to so many parties, I've done this, I've done that. You know, the house was a mess. Everyone finally left, thank God. I finally got my house back in shape. I'm just so glad it's all over with. Thanks for the ice cream cone. You totally missed it. You can do that any day of the year. Throw a big bash and have a lot of people over and spend a lot of money you don't need to. But if one day out of the year you realize what it means that God is with us, and if one day out of the year that salvation event happens that I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but I know Tomorrow is not going to bring anything that God and I can't handle. If that happens, your whole life is different. If it doesn't happen, your house is dirty and your bills are plenty. It's about all it is. Let's talk about what it means to have that salvation event. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey's over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. Joseph, her husband, 
since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that a child has been conceived in her. An upright man not willing to expose her to shame, that's the new interpretation or the uh, translation. The old one says, an upright man not willing to expose her to the law. And you know what the law was? When you were with child and without husband? In some areas of the world, it's still the same today. You were stoned to death. You were an adulterous woman. And Joseph, her betrothed, he was a guy who lived by the law. Hey, look, you know, she's nice and all that. And you know, when she says, we're going to have a baby, thank you very much. Not me. I'm out of here. He decided to divorce her quiet. I don't want to kill her, but I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this because I know the baby's not mine. Why do I make a point of that? Because sometimes the things that God asks of us are not the things we want to do. Sometimes the things that God asks of us are not what everyone else thinks we ought to do. Sometimes the thing that God asks of us, everybody and their brothers got an opinion about it. And sometimes God asks us to do very difficult things. Now, we, we have a history rife with people who believe God was speaking to them. And because of that, God wanted him to go in this preschool and kill kids. Or God wanted him to take these people to a mountain because the world was coming to an end, or God wanted everybody to drink the Kool-Aid. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, if we're preparing for the Lord to come to us, then we have to be willing to listen to what God asks of us. You know, it's the old joke that, you know, the guy's on, on the cliff, and he's looking, he takes one step too far, and he goes down, just like the road run commercial, you know, he it, there's a tree and he grabs on and he looks down and he's way down. He looks up and he's way far from the top. He starts yelling, please, please help anybody up there. Help, help. You know, can somebody help me? God, please help me. And the voice like in the movie, this is God. Oh, great God, please help get me out of here. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just get me out of here. God says, let go. Anybody else up there? We don't want to know some of the things that God asks of us sometimes. Because sometimes the things that God asks of us are very, very difficult. People are asked all the time to love people in spite of. You know, there are a lot of situations where people we love make very, very, in our own mind, difficult and incorrect decisions. I just can't imagine that this is what God wants of my child. This is a lifestyle they want him to live. This is a person that God wants him to be. And that's hard. That's very, very difficult that we have to be loving. And there's a difference. There's a difference between loving and accepting. It's not okay with me. It's never going to be okay with me. It's a choice. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of life that I believe is contrary to what God has in store for you. And it's also contrary to God's law. So if you ask me to accept it, love me, love my dog, well, you and your dog can leave. But I still love you. I still care about you. 
you're always welcome in my home and in my heart. But the choices you've made, I'm not going to agree with because it's wrong. Well, Mom, Dad, if you don't let me you know, bring my girlfriend home and sleep with her in the house, I'm not coming home for Christmas. Well, darling, I love you. I don't know where you're going to eat. McDonald's is closed Christmas Day. I ain't going to love you. You can come home. Your girlfriend can come home. You're not living together in my house, baby. You're not going to do that. I don't care what they say at college and how acceptable it is, and I don't care how many people are doing it or how many of our friends have children who are doing it. I love you. The most important thing that I can offer you is salvation and to allow you to violate God's law in my house, under my roof, it's not going to happen. But I do love you, and you are welcome. And so is she or he. But not in the same room, not in the same bed. That's tough. That's tough. God asks us to do difficult things. You know, this morning we had the gospel of, of, the, of the talents. One had, you know, all got the gold coin. One had ten gold coins. One had five. And one went and buried his. Don't believe that we're going to stand before the throne of God and say, now the only thing I want to know is, were you happy? As long as you were happy, I'm happy. That's not what God's going to ask us as we stand before the throne of God. That's not what God expects of us. That's not what God gave us children for, to say, well, it's okay with me as long as you're happy. If it's contrary to God's law, I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you more than ever. And I'm going to pray for you more than ever. But if you're asking me to embrace something that I think separates you from the law of God, then, baby, that's not going to happen. Those are the difficult things. I can imagine Mary going to her parents before she had lived together with Joseph to let him know she was with child. Well, you know, difficult, difficult. And I think that's what we need to understand. People have this silly notion that if God is with us, we all live happily ever after. If God is with us, well, if this is a marriage God wanted me to, to be in, then marriage wouldn't be so difficult. If God wanted me to love these kids, then we wouldn't have all these problems. If God wanted me to be in this business, I wouldn't have as many struggles. I, it, it, it's just not in there. And they all lived happily ever after. It's just not in there. And that, <coughs> that challenge in our own lives to seek God is with us. So this Christmas, as we prepare for Emmanuel, we prepare God is with us, maybe God's going to ask us to do something very difficult. Maybe God's going to ask us, you know what? It's time to get over yourself. It's time to let that thing that happened 20 years ago, it's time to, it's time to get over that. It's time to call your brother and invite him over for Christmas, okay? I don't care who got Mama's silverware, it's time for you to let it go. And if we are going to have <clears throat> God is with us, then those are the things that we really have to do. And that's a challenge in all of our lives. You know, we, we, we want the <coughs> be nice, brush your teeth, say your prayers, and go to sleep early, and Santa Claus is going to come God. That's not the God that he offers us. That's not the God that he promises us. And as we see in the event of the word being made flesh, he gave Mary and Joseph something very difficult to understand, something very difficult to embrace, but it was important. It was important that they say, God, if this is what you want for me, I'm showing up. So if you do take it seriously, <coughs> to set aside some time, to really prepare for a salvation event. If you do take that seriously, and I hope you will. You know, a lot of people have time off right before Christmas, maybe 
Christmas is Sunday this year. Maybe you get off work a few days early. Go to an adoration chapel. Go to a daily mass. Take a little time to say, God, what is it that you want from me? What does it mean for me to, what do I need to do in order for you to, to be God is with us? What do I need to take out of my heart? What do I need to put into my heart? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to embrace? I know it's difficult, and you may not want to hear the answer. And I don't think Mary was exactly thrilled when they said, Behold, you're going to give birth. And she, How can this be since I don't know man? It was difficult. But when you know it's what God is asking of you, it's all the difference in the world. I can do it. I can do it. Because if what God is asking of me, then God gives me the grace. God gives me the strength. God gives me the wisdom. It's not going to be easy. But God is going to see it to completion. And that's a challenge. You know, maybe it's putting up with someone in my, in my house and just, you know, the reality is the last person I want is that person in my house. But you know what, God? I have to love them. I have to love them. And uh, I don't have to sit down and we don't have to get in the corner of the table and trade recipes. I got to love them and I got to have the grace and the strength to be what you want me to be. And sometimes it's through the difficult things we understand where God is with us. We usually don't understand God is with us in the midst of great blessings because in the midst of great blessings, most of us get kind of full of ourselves and think it's all about me. And I deserve this because I've worked so hard for it. But when God puts it in our heart, you gotta change this. You got to do something. You got to let go. You got to grab on. You got to be loving. You can't accept everything. You don't have to embrace what separates people from God, but you have to embrace the person who's struggling with that. That's the challenge. That's where we open the door. And I hope it's not a question. Yeah, I invite him over for Christmas. God, it's not over yet. God, you know, they ought to be leaving anytime. I hope it's not that. Hope it's that opportunity for us to realize God has called me to it, God is gonna bring me through it, and God has given me the grace to change, not today, but to change, and make sure he's with me well past Christmas Day. God bless you. Have a wonderful and blessed Christmas.